Well, hi there. Welcome to Seasons Change. My name is Luann, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a few of the lessons that I learned during the Texas freeze. Okay, well, welcome to the channel. Like I said in today's video, I want to share with you a few of the lessons that I learned during the Texas freeze. And I will soon have out another video that's going to share with you the most used items that we used during the freeze. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I want to go ahead and invite you to do that now by hitting the big red subscribe button down below. And if you hit the little bell, it's going to notify you each time that I put out a new video. Okay, so before I get into just a couple of the lessons that I learned during the freeze, I want to explain to you a little bit of my experience with cold weather. Now, those of you that know me know that I was born and raised in West Virginia. My home was located way out in the stick, and there were times, many times, that we were stranded with no power, no water for weeks. So I do have a little bit of experience and background whenever it comes to surviving the cold climates. And with that being said, I want to add that whenever you take those situations and you try to compare that to the Texas freeze situation, there's just absolutely no comparison. I know that uh, maybe if you're from the north and you've been raised in that type of climate, you may be having a pretty hard time trying to figure out what went wrong and why this was such a serious situation. And I want to shed a little bit of light on that. I'm no expert, but just speaking from my own experience, I want to try to help you understand. Okay, when you live in the north and it snows, you layer up and you go outside. You can endure the cold, you can do whatever work needs to be done outside, you can even take a walk and enjoy the beauty of the snow, you can sleigh ride, you can just do so many things outside. Well, here in Texas, the terrain is different, the climate is different, and the cold actually hurts. The instant you walk outside, within 10 minutes, you are already feeling that pain, and it's not just in your fingers and toes. You are feeling it from head to toe. It is a different kind of cold. And whenever you turn off the electricity within these homes that have been designed to release the heat, you have to understand that it is instantly a life and death situation for those that are not prepared. The supplies are not the same. Even if we wanted to prepare, the supplies just don't exist. Chances are, if you even mention the word heat tape to someone born and raised in Texas, I'm going to say that at least 8 out of 10 have never heard of it before because it's just not necessary. And think about it. If it was your business to supply cold climate materials and supplies, who are you going to market to the most? People in the north that have the snow seasons or people in the south that rarely see it. So even if we do have these supplies in our stores, they're in such a small quantity that there's just not enough for everybody that needs it. Okay, so I hope that that shed a little bit of light on how there are just no comparison between the cold in the north and the cold in the south and our ability to cope and prepare for these type of events. This channel is very necessary. Now the reason why this is a lesson is because I have been struggling with the direction of my channel. I felt that, you know, I started YouTube as a homemaking channel, but through that whole process I always felt like there's just so much more to homemaking than just cooking and cleaning, and I just didn't feel comfortable with all of those, watch me clean my house, watch me cook my dinner. There's just more of a message that needed to be told. And when I started posting videos about what I was seeing in the grocery stores, well, that is when the prepping community found me. And I am so thankful for it. There are people out there that I look up to that are so far advanced in the, in the prepping community. But through this Texas freeze, I realized that it doesn't matter what level of prepping you're on. That if you have anything to share, 
if you do anything that is a lesson or something new to someone else, then it needs to be shared. In any way that I can help, I want to do that. And I also know that those of you that are watching these channels, you too have a wealth of knowledge that needs to be shared with people. And I know not everyone's going to want to start up their own YouTube channel, but please use the comment sections in these videos to share your knowledge. There are beginners that are reading these comments that are seeking your direction, my direction, all the other prepping channels direction, and we need to come together as a community because I cannot even begin to explain how helpless I felt when I kept hearing the stories of people that were freezing to death. Through these type of videos and through our prepping community, if we pull together in the comments and through our videos, we are going to educate people and ultimately save lives. So for the first time since YouTube also has kind of been pushing me down this prepping trail, I feel very confident that these videos and this channel is necessary and I feel that that was a lesson that I really needed to learn. So with full confidence, full motivation, I'm so excited to move forward with this channel. I know I've been absent for a few weeks now, but I'm ready to go full force into this prepping community and I want to thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of it. There's so much that I want to learn from you. I grew up with the women in my family canning, raising gardens. I've gotten away from all of that. And I hope that through the very knowledgeable people in this community, I'm going to start getting back to the basics and I'm going to bring you along with me on this channel. Never think that you've got all your bases covered. In any given situation, there is always going to be room for improvement and areas that you can grow in. Even being raised in a cold climate, there were a lot of things that we just took for granted in this situation that I'm going to be better prepared for if this ever happens again. So you have to develop that worst case scenario mindset. That's the only way that you're going to come even close to being prepared. You're going to run out of gas. What are you going to do when there's no more propane? You can't go out and buy it either because the roads are impassable, because trees are down, or there's too much ice on the road, or like here, the gas stations didn't have power. Without power, you're not going to get the gas out of the pumps. And whenever you do get the gas out of the pumps, so is everybody else in town, and it's going to be drained dry. The tanker trunks Trucks can't come and refill because they can't get to you. The roads are closed. So these are all things and all very real situations that just took place that you need to think about. So I'm not saying don't stock up on propane. Don't stock up on gas. Don't think that you have it covered. You know, we have to have some confidence, but you still have to think about what's going to happen after that. When you deplete that supply, what next? When you're in these type of situations, you'll see with each level of surviving, we're going back further and further to the basics. The best way to conserve your resources is move your family into one small room with lower ceilings, close off the doorways, whether it's with blankets or if you do have doors, and stay in that room. Conserve your energy. That room is going to become so much warmer and your resources are going to be used so much better going to that smaller, more confined space. Keep your vehicles full of gas. I know we've all heard this a million times, but here's how important it is. You have a vehicle out there. You can get in there for warmth, to charge your phone. You have the heated seats. It's very nice. But again, if you don't have a lot of gas to work with, that's only going to last for so long. Okay, in a free situation, you are going to want to try to keep as much cold out of your home as possible. So one easy way to do that is go through your home, close all of the blinds, close all of the curtains. If you have towels that you can put along the doorways or in the window sills, take every step possible to keep as much of the cold air out of your home as possible. 
if the temperatures outside are below 40 degrees and you're about to lose the contents of your refrigerator or freezer, by all means, take those items outside. If you're worried about critters getting into your food, then put it in a cooler, but have them outside. We moved all of the contents of my kitchen refrigerator and freezer. We put it in two coolers. We cracked it open a little bit to get that cold airflow going through it. And actually we had things that froze. Please don't just sit there and allow your food to spoil because you've lost electricity. If it's cold, put it outside. Another thing that you need to always do is wrap your pipes. Uh, if this is any outdoor faucets, get some heavy foam and wrap around it. Uh, they do sell the insulated little boxes that you can put over your outdoor faucets. Do whatever you have to do. Northerners, you need to understand this goes back to the different ways that our homes are built. In a lot of instances, the water pipes actually run through the attic of these homes where very, very cold air and outdoor temperatures are actually reaching the pipes. So many homes were destroyed from all of the busted pipes in the attics actually raining down and destroying all of their belongings. But do the best that you can to always, whenever you hear a freeze is headed our way, to do something about those pipes. They do sell tape, they do sell things that you can actually wrap around your pipes to keep them from freezing. I don't want to get into a list of a lot of products to have on hand because like I said, that's going to be in my next video, but I am going to share three. The first one is antibacterial spray. And the reason why I feel that that is important enough to list in this video is because when we lost water and then the water came back, we were on a boil notice for several days. What you need to understand is that water is contaminated so if you are actually wiping down your counters or your food surfaces with this water you're contaminating that surface so it's very important to have some antibacterial and antiviral spray on hand so that you can use that and some paper towels instead of the water from the faucet uh, the next item that I want to mention is a Berkey. A Berkey's water filtration system purifies your water well enough that you don't have to boil it. You can pour it right through the Berkey and it's going to be safe to drink, safe to clean with, safe to brush your teeth with. Just a Berkey is an excellent investment for any type of situation like this. If you do own a Berkey, you also need to have bottled water on hand, if anything, just to help people in your community. And then the last thing that I want to mention here is when you're preparing your meals, cook extra and freeze those as freezer meals. If you have a recipe and you have the ingredients, double it. Freeze the second one. These freezer meals were a lifesaver, not just for my family, but I was also able to hand them out to others. They're already fully cooked. All they have to do is thaw out and you have a meal for your family or for your neighbor's family. Well, I sure hope that these lessons that I shared with you today will shed some light and give you some good ideas on how you can prepare should an event like this ever happen in your area. News reports came out that Texas was actually minutes away of a catastrophic grid down situation that was going to leave us without power for months not days months so as bad as this situation was it could have been a million times worse so now what i'm going to do with all of these lessons is i'm also going to be preparing for the next big event to me, summer's right around the corner, and I can't even imagine being stuck in South Texas in the middle of summertime without electricity. So my thoughts after filling in the gaps from this winter event is going to be how am I going to survive the heat should the grid go down in the summer. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by either giving it the thumbs up or the thumbs down. And remember, any knowledge that you have to share, please share it with us in the comments below. Well, until next time, stay strong, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!